Good morning, church family. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning, joining us for worship. If you are watching on YouTube Live, we would love for you to use that chat feature. Let us know where you're watching from. Say hello. We love interacting with you throughout the morning um, using that chat. And if you are in Boone, or even if you're not, but you're a close enough drive after our online service from 11.15 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., we will be doing a drive-through or walk-through communion. We'll have masks on. We have our sanitized, pre-packaged um, communion elements, and we have just been loving that way of seeing some people face-to-face, -face, praying with you, just connecting with you in a safe way while we can't meet right now. And if you're not in Boone, but you want to get more involved with our community and just get to know people, we have digital spiritual formation groups that we are uh, revamping and encouraging everyone to be a part of. So if you want to do that or to give and partner with our ministry financially, you can find out more how to do that at www.theheart.us. But right now, I would just like us to take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship. And just let's take a minute to center ourselves on Christ, on his peace, on who he is, on his goodness, his faithfulness, his trustworthiness. So humor me and just take a moment and close your eyes and take a deep breath in. God, as we approach you in your presence and we sing, or maybe we don't sing, maybe we meditate and we listen and we absorb God, we want to be reminded of who you are. We want to recenter our whole beings on you and fix our hearts and our minds on you. So with every word that I sing, that we sing together, that we listen to this morning, God, would you transform us in that process of worship, in that process of giving you honor and recentering. God, we love you. We want to have communion with you this morning, to be united with you, to learn more from your word, to hear your voice, to feel your presence. We want all those things. And so we ask for your presence to be near to us. We praise you, God. We worship you. We give you the honor that you deserve. Amen. The peace 
eternity Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder And show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to the Take your first.
Good morning, kids and families of the heart. We've been talking about the idea of prayer with our kids here during the kids moment. And we've been using a little bit of creativity in our prayer life through our movement prayers. We're trying to learn from the language of the Psalms how to pray to God with a richer conversation. So we've invited our kids to act out and enjoy the imagery of the Psalms with their wiggles. So this morning, we're gonna talk about prayer that's maybe a little bit closer to home. Praying for our friends, our family, and our loved ones. How do we do that, kids? I have a friend of mine who was a missionary for a number of years, and one way that we kept his concerns and, and remembered to pray for him and his family, we had this picture of their family on our refrigerator, and it reminded us to pray about what they were doing. And so, kids, during this season where we're not spending as much time with our groups of friends as we'd want to, maybe we can find some creative ways to keep them in front of us so we can remember to pray for them. So me and Rowan thought about this and here's what we came up with. All right, buddy, can you draw your friends? But I just don't know how, how I draw, but I just don't know how I draw. Um... Who do you want to draw? Wait, I don't, wait, that doesn't work very good. That's okay, you're doing great. Just draw a couple people. You want to draw Everly or Augustine? Who do you want to draw? Yeah. Okay. But this, that's so, okay to draw with that part. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, who but, do you want to draw first? But I draw with this. Everly, Augustine, Mommy, Daddy, who do you want to draw? Uh, Everly. Everly? Good job. Okay. My hands are right on my head. Um, my picture. Who else is in your picture? Um, Oh no. Who else is in your picture? Oh, um, Effie. Yeah. This is one way, Rowan, that we can remember our friends is that we can draw a picture. And what do you want to do with it? Do you want to hang it on the refrigerator? So I can see it. Let's go hang it on the refrigerator. Yeah, sure. All right, let's go. Here this goes. It's not working. Why don't you find a magnet, bud? I think I'll use, I got it. Rowan and friend, can, can we spell their names on the fridge? I think that would be a fun way yeah. to, to remember to pray for our friends, right? Yeah. Yes, right. I'm just trying to make somebody's names. Letters are my. I, I'm gonna use this letter next. And this letter. And this letter. Good um, job, bud. Now, if we name it all finished, it says F A R E. Ask her if you can pray about anything for her. Say, do you want me to pray for you? Yeah. I can pray about um, uh, Toys or... Uh... Did you know that God loves it when we pray for one another? So guys, remember, you can pray for one another. And even if we don't feel as close as we want to right now because of this 
thing called coronavirus and the idea of social distance. But maybe in God, we can feel closer to one another. After our worship time has ended, kids and families, why don't you get together and decorate your refrigerator or journal or whatever you use with your friends and call them and ask them how to pray for them. We can grow closer to God through prayer and we can find ourselves closer to one another. All right, Godspeed. I hope you guys have a great morning. Hi, I'm Jason. We've been focusing on desert practices over the past few weeks and this morning, I'd love to talk about prayer or at least one aspect of prayer. Last week was a bit of an emphasis on listening prayer, centering prayer, contemplative prayer, the spiritual practice and desert practice of being alone, having silence, having solitude. And prayer isn't always about saying something and doing something and appealing for God to do something. But this week, I want to lean into the, what we normally think of with prayer, at least in Western culture, sometimes called intercessory prayer or intercession. The, the, these are the kinds of prayers that you, when you pray for someone. But I don't want this morning to get into, the. I don't want it in any way to seem like there's some kind of formula. If you pray this way, this happens. I don't know. I've never really resonated with that and I've never really, I feel like anyone who presents like all you have to do is this and then this happens. I tend to not trust people who talk that way. But there's, there's something about intercessory prayer. There, 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 there's something that I've experienced that I think is real in that. And then of course, in, uh, there are all sorts of biblical examples. One of which is Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So there it is. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So there's something specific about presenting our requests to God. Prayer is not just silence. Prayer is not just listening. Prayer is not just meditating. Prayer is also petitioning or, or, or requesting to God. But I, I really think it's important to continue in this passage, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. So I just read 6. Here's 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. There's a lot there I just want to briefly mention, though, instead of going through all of all the implications of what that could mean. I, want, I just want to briefly mention that it doesn't directly say, nor do I think that there's a theme throughout Scripture that addresses something like through prayer and petition request, things will always happen the way that you are requesting. Now, there are some passages that talk about asking God and God giving, some of which actually uh, there's an emphasis on asking for the Holy Spirit, and uh, and the 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 teaching is well. Of course, you'd get the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't. God wouldn't refuse that from you if you were to ask. But I think sometimes I get caught up a little bit in. Or I get dragged down a little bit by the sentiments that. You have to pray a certain way with a certain kind of formula. And if you do, you will get what you asked for. But on the other side of that same coin is there can become there. There can be a bit of a pessimistic approach where you say, well, you know, if God doesn't God's going to do whatever God's going to do or things are just going to happen anyway. Why should I bother praying? Why should I bother requesting? I think there's a little bit of a hint here in verse 7. Why should you bother asking? Well, I don't know all that goes on in that interaction. I'm not God, and 
uh, I don't know what God does with my prayers. I don't know if God answers. I don't know how God answers. I don't know how all that works. But I, there's something special about doing it. And here are two things that I want to suggest this morning that are very special about doing it. They're just two things. It's not exhaustive. It's not going to answer all of your questions. I can't answer all of your questions. I don't know how prayer works. I don't know all that God does with our prayers. I don't know why some seem to be answered and some don't. Uh, 20 years ago, I thought I knew. And now I know that I don't know. But I have experienced this. I've experienced verse 7. Like the, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present these requests to God. And what is one of the results? What is one of the whys? Why would that? What's the point? And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There have been times that... I have prayed for someone to be healed. Someone's in the hospital. They're going through surgery. And just pray that, you know, God, would you be with so-and-so? Would you bring healing to them? And then they're not healed and they die. And instead of thinking that I did something wrong and it was all up to me and I somehow love this person more than God and God should have healed them and I wanted them to be healed. But what, what I've experienced is my heart being guarded, my, my mind being filled with the mind of Christ. There's some sort of peace that I feel, and I want to go further and say, I think one of the purposes of intercessory prayer, prayer is that you draw closer to the people you're praying for. So those are the things that I've experienced. I don't, know, I don't know how God handles these prayer requests. I don't know why sometimes it, it works and, I, and at others it doesn't. And I, I would caution you if, some, if someone around you says that they know how it all works. Be very careful with that. But through experience and through, I think, a biblical example here, I think that it's actually safe and accurate to say and to teach that prayer and petition presenting requests to God with thanksgiving creates a sense of peace in our hearts guards our hearts guards our minds in Christ and draws us closer to the to the people that we're praying for if if you I mentioned this last week, but one of the one of the teachings of the ancient rabbis when they were asked what's the purpose of prayer, and you know if you get a bunch of rabbis in a room, you're going to get a whole lot of answers. They say more answers than rabbis, and one of the teachings of the ancient rabbis about the purpose of prayer was to get to know what's in your own heart. So, intercessory prayer, whatever you're praying for, whatever you're thinking about, whatever ends up coming out of your mouth was in your heart so it's now being revealed so it's maybe not just about praying it all the right way so that god does something that it has to be all biblically accurate with all the formula maybe it's just a revealing of what's going on in here and so when you pray when you have petition when you express thanksgiving when you present requests to god whether it's uh whether it's informal and casual as it comes to mind or if you have the journal and you pray and you write down all these prayer requests these are things that are being revealed that are inside of you and so let's say your grandmother's sick and she's in the hospital and she has cancer when you pray for your grandmother it actually does matter there's something there that god might do and might not do and that stuff matters people's lives matter their health matters but there's also something else going on there, and that is there's a sense of, of peace, of your, your heart and mind being guarded, and you are paying attention to that thing in you that so dearly loves your grandmother. And that is important. And so one of the purposes of intercessory prayer is to be able to pay attention to the things that you find important. And 
I'll go further with it. I think that there's a way that maybe it can kind of go the other direction too. Uh, maybe it's a little bit demonstrated. There's a little hint there in the sentiment of praying for our enemies, praying for those who persecute, loving our enemies, praying for those who persecute us. What if you don't feel actually particularly close to someone? Maybe if you pray for them, Maybe if you pray for them, you'll start to feel closer to them. So I'd encourage you if, you, if you don't pray much, if you don't have prayers of petition or requests, if you, if you don't have regular rhythms where you ask God for things, <laughs> maybe commit to a season of doing that. To see what's in your heart. Find out what's in your heart. And actually, you might find out there's some kind of selfish sentiments. There might be seasons where if you, you, you let whatever's in your heart come out and you might just say, Dear God, give me these things. I want more things and I want more stuff. And give me this thing that I saw at the store the other day. And you might, it's just coming out and you find out that it's there. And when you find out it's, that it's there, you can acknowledge that it's there. And you, wow, that's there. That's in, that was in my heart. That's my desire. And over time, you can learn that there's other stuff in your heart. There's a deeper well. There's a deeper source in you that wants more real things than that. Sometimes when you dig, when you, when you go down into a well to get water, sometimes you don't get the deepest, best water right away. And so... Maybe just get all that stuff out of your system and I want a new car and I want a new house and I want a new, I want a raise and I get it out. Just go ahead and get it out. It's in there. Get, get it out. Keep digging into the well. Keep going in deeper and deeper into that source because the kingdom is in your midst. There's more there and maybe it's not just about saying it right, doing it right. Maybe it's about discerning what is in your heart and also maybe training your heart. So maybe there's some people that uh, you don't particularly like or you don't get along with. Maybe there's a work associate, a family member, a roommate, and doesn't always go well. Maybe you could commit to actively and regularly praying for them and see what happens. See if your heart starts to draw closer to them. So it's time for another challenge. It's been, it's been quite a while, except a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to challenge us. And here's another one. I love how Things just kind of circle back around to old school ways, but maybe would you consider making a list of things and or people to pray for? In part, because you would literally be asking God to do these things, but also for you to be able to discern and, and expect and respond to the peace of God that you might feel. The feeling of maybe your, your heart and your mind being guarded somehow in Christ and also how you are drawing closer to those people or those experiences. Maybe there's some world events going on that are particularly dear to you that you feel strongly about. Maybe it's related to natural disasters and you know injuries and deaths and the people that have been affected by those or maybe it's related to racial injustice conversations and you want to be praying for certain people certain people groups and maybe there's the kind of people that you normally gravitate towards that you normally have affinity to that you would be praying for them think also about the, the people that you don't you normally don't Maybe be thinking about the people that you might go so far as to say are your enemies. 
would you commit to praying for them? And so challenge, it's mid-September. Would you spend the rest of September, next couple weeks, actively, regularly praying for people and circumstances? And don't just try to find out if the prayers were, quote, answered, but also be discerning and thinking through the feeling of peace and your heart and mind being guarded and also be, begin to be more in touch with the part of you that is drawing closer to people. Because in the midst of us talking about desert practices and within the context of COVID-19 and us not being as close together as we would prefer, well, maybe there's some people that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe there's people that you actually are kind of close with them and you like them and you're friends with them, but you actually haven't bumped into them in six months. Write their name down and remember to be praying for them. And then over the next couple of weeks, see if as you pray for them, you feel yourself being drawn closer to them. And when you do that, may you realize that you are not as alone as you thought. And so, my sisters and my brothers, may you believe that God listens to your prayers. But may you also believe that you can listen to your prayers and learn something about yourself. And may you believe that God is in the midst of all of your prayers and all of your thoughts. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and be gracious to you and turn his face towards you and shine his light on you and grant you with peace. Amen.